Hello and welcome to another update. In this one, I'll be talking about the upcoming Russian offensive. The first question will be, will there be one? The second question will be, when will it be? And the third one will be, how will it be? So the first question, will it be there at all? There, I have mapped out all the sources that have said that there's most likely going to be one. I'll start in the United States, where first of all, we have the Institute for the Study of War, who say, a new Russian offensive is highly likely in the coming months. Then we have the Bloomberg article that says Putin prepares a new offensive war could drag on for years. So we are seeing one from here as well. Uh, the US politician, the US publication Bloomberg writes that the Russian president is preparing a new offensive, which could start as early as February or March before Kyiv receives weapons from the United States and Europe. Then we have in Europe, we have from NATO themselves saying NATO suspects Russia of preparing new offensive, says NATO Secretary General Stoltenberg. The problem is that we see no signs that Putin and the authorities in Moscow are preparing for peace. We see that they are preparing for a new offensive, that they are mobilizing more soldiers, more than 200,000, perhaps even more. I don't understand the Western narrative of the Russians mobilizing more soldiers, as there's been no reports or no evidence of that uh, out of the open source intelligence uh, sources. Uh, as for Poland, the Polish president, we can see here in this German article that the Polish president says, I think it's the plan of Putin and his people like Valery Gerasimov, his new commander in chief of the Russian army to encircle Ukraine. And in preparing all these plans, he probably feels he needs to attack from two or three different directions. Therefore, I think that the Ukrainians cannot rule out an attack from the Belarusian northern part of Ukraine to encircle Kiev from the west. So here we have the Polish president's view. Then in Ukraine itself, there has been three different sources. The first one is from the Ukrainian army, where they state Russia is preparing to launch a massive attack on Ukraine from the Black Sea. Uh, what is the nature of this attack and when is it? They don't mention anything about that. Then we have the Secretary of the National Security and Defense Co Council, Alexei Danilov, where he says, now they are preparing for maximum activation given that they are people from the Soviet and they believe that if there is any anniversary, they must have some achievements. There's no secret that they are preparing for a new wave before February 24th. And then we have the representative of the main intelligence directorate, Andrei Cherniak. He says, Putin gave the order to capture the territories of Donetsk and Luhansk regions by March. This was reported by the representative he stated that there are signs that Russia is preparing for a new attempt at a massive offensive and seizure of the east of the country. So, the final sources is Sergei Lavrov, as he had a speech earlier today. And in them he mentions first that we will push the Ukrainians back to a point where their artillery and rockets cannot hit Russian territory. And we have this second statement. We will ensure that the events organized by the West on the anniversary of the special military operation in Ukraine won't be the only thing to attract world attention. So, is there going to be a large-scale offensive? Yes, I can conclude that from all the different sources all agreeing on the fact that Russia is going to launch a large-scale offensive. So, when is it going to be? Okay, so according to most Western sources, they claim between February and March. So from the, these days now, it is the 2nd of February, and all the way to the end of March, that is the, the date for this offensive. And it seems that there is a connection between the anniversary of the Special Military Operation and the new offensive, as both the West and Sergei Lavrov refer to it, as a point where the Russians need to receive results. They need results before the one-year mark of the war, Therefore, I believe that it is going to be as soon as possible because they need to get results before the anniversary. So they have three weeks left before the one year mark has been passed. And why? So why haven't they launched the offensive yet? That is because of the weather. 
as we can see here, the ground will not be frozen before Saturday at the earliest in Kiev, and that is because the temperature goes into the positives during the day, while at the night it is in the negatives. So it will be close to freezing, but it will not be at the freezing point yet. However, starting Saturday and moving onwards, we can see all the way to Thursday, it is going to be in the negatives. This means that the Russian forces will not be able to launch any large-scale offensives before Friday night at the very earliest, but most likely on Saturday or Sunday. And this is in Kiev, which is to the furthest north of the country. If we look at Zaporizhia, which is further south, at the very earliest that will be Monday night, but most likely Tuesday or Wednesday. And in Leman, which is also to the south, this will be either Monday or Tuesday. So we can conclude from these numbers that the Russian forces will not launch any large-scale offensive before the ground is frozen, which is at the very earliest start next week. So essentially start next week, we see that the ground is frozen all over Ukraine, and that is most likely when we will see this offensive starting, once the ground has frozen. Now, we have the first point, will there be an offensive? Yes, there will. When is it going to start? somewhere in February or March, most likely uh, starting next week. And if that is not the point where the Russians are ready for an offensive, then it will be much later, probably by the anniversary or in March. Therefore, we can conclude that the Russian forces are starting an offensive and it's going to be soon. The final point, where will it be? Okay, so we have different sources and the different claims are west of Kiev. The different claims are west of Kiev to cut off the supplies from NATO to Ukraine. And that is according to Poland. Then we have claims towards Kiev itself. And that is, okay, and that is according to multiple sources. Then we have claims against Zaporizhia and to the east in general, to catching, trying to capture all of eastern Ukraine. So essentially what we can determine from Lavrov's statement of we want to prevent the Ukrainians from launching attacks into Russian territory, we are most likely going to see the Russians try to capture everything east of the Dnieper River, that is to prevent any attacks on Bryansk, Belgorod and Kursk regions. And we also have to expect them to attack Krivirik, Mykolaiv and Odessa, that is to protect the Kherson and southern regions of Ukraine, which the Russians have annexed. Otherwise, Sergei Lavrov's statement will not be correct. So for Lavrov's statement to be correct, the Russians need to capture southern Ukraine and eastern Ukraine. So from the Ukrainian sources who claim they will capture all of eastern Ukraine, as well as a massive offensive from the sea towards Odessa or Mykolaiv or Kherson. In that case, both my analysis, Western analysis, Ukrainian analysis, and Russian statements all align to Russia launching a major offensive using all of their forces to capture Eastern Ukraine and Southern Ukraine. And for that to happen, they need to completely capitulate Ukraine. So they need to attack and cut off all supplies from the West. They need to attack Kiev directly. They need to cut off supplies to Eastern Ukraine and they need to secure land bridges to go to Southern Ukraine. And now before you tell me this is not going to happen, I'm just saying that this is the intention of the Russian army, of the Russian leadership. They want to do this. And now I'm telling you how they need to do it. They need to capture the bridges across the Dnieper River. They need this to have a secure supply line as if they just blow up the bridges or they pass through it without controlling the bridges, they will eventually run out of supplies, similar to what we saw in Kherson. So they need to capture multiple bridges across the Dnieper River. For that, they need to capture Saporizhia, Dnipro, and Kremenchuk. So this is a southern offensive. At the same time, they need to threaten Kiev to prevent any more further reinforcements to the south, and at the same time, bring the Ukrainian army from the south to the north, spreading it out. At the same time, if they want to capture all of eastern Ukraine, they also need to attack from the east. This is to spread out the Ukrainian forces and essentially cut eastern Ukraine into two, 
by reaching Kremenchuk from the Sumi region or north of Kharkiv towards Pultava and Kremenchuk. This is to cut eastern Ukraine into two and separate Kiev from the rest of the Ukrainian army. So we'll see an attack from the north towards Kiev, an attack from the north to the west of Kiev to cut off supplies from Lviv, an attack from Saporizhia towards Saporizhia city and Dnipro, all of this while attacking straight ahead in Donbass on the whole front line. An attack towards Kharkiv as it is a main supply route as well as station and military operation op center for Ukrainian forces in the eastern and southern Ukraine. And at the same time launch a naval offensive towards Odessa to bombard the city, the coastline, as well as a possible landing of airborne forces in Zaporizhia and Dnipro to take control over the bridges prior to the Russian army arriving. So an operation similar to that of the Hostomil airport battle, where the Russian forces will need to land on an airfield, which will most likely be situated on the western coast of the Dnipro river. And then they will attack in a ground offensive towards the city, where they will try to connect with the eastern part. Because the Russian forces need to protect these bridges, because they need the bridges. They cannot control southern Ukraine without controlling the bridges. And if the Ukrainian forces are in a situation where they're going to lose eastern Ukraine, they will blow up all of their own bridges across the Dnieper River, because they know unless they blow up these bridges, the Russians will use them to launch an offensive into western Ukraine. With that information, we see that they have heavily mined the north, so it will be very difficult for the Russians to trust through, or at the very least, it will be very slow for them. Therefore, we can conclude that the main focus of the Russian army will be in the Saporizhia front towards Dnipro, in the east towards Poltava, and in the northeast towards Kiev through Chernihiv. And what we will see different from the original offensive towards Kiev, what will be different, because they cannot just repeat the same and expect different results, is that First of all, they have a much larger force, an estimated force of about 700 to 800,000 troops. And the second thing is that they will change their strategy of advancement. They will do something similar to what they're doing in the south, where they will be attacking the whole front line and they'll be trying to advance similar to World War One style rather than Blitzkrieg style. So they will not take the roads, they will not launch very long, long offensives with very long supply lines, they will take all the cities in their way for a slow but stable offensive throughout the country. So they will focus on attacking Chernihiv and taking Chernihiv before they advance. They'll take Sumi before they advance. They will not spend their time trying to run through everything with speed. They'll try to take a slow and steady approach to take control over the front line before they launch further offensives into Ukraine. And that is the conclusion of my analysis. Hope you all enjoyed. Thank you all for watching and have a great day.